Hello everyone. In the following presentation, I will be covering Roy Campbell's poem, The Zulu Girl. Roy Campbell is a South African poet who was born in Durban. As a child, he grew up listening to stories of the great Shaka Zulu. Through these stories, he learned about the proud tradition of the struggle and survival of the warrior nation of the Zulu people. He showed much sympathy towards the hardship and endurance of black South Africans. This is evident in his poetry, and in this case, it is therefore appropriate that he uses a Zulu girl as a symbol of their struggle. Let us read through the poem. When in the sun the hot red acres smolder, down where the sweating gang its labour plies, a girl flings down her hoe, and from her shoulder unslings her child, tormented by flies. She takes him to a ring of shadow, pulled by the thorn tree, purpled with the blood of ticks, while her sharp nails in slow caresses ruled, prowl through his hair with sharp electric clicks. His sleepy mouth, plugged by the heavy nipple, tugs like a puppy, grunting as he feeds. Through his frail nerves her own deep languors ripple, like a broad river sighing through the reeds. Yet in that drowsy stream his flesh imbibes an old, unquenched, unsmotherable heat. The curbed ferocity of beaten tribes, the sullen dignity of their defeat. Her body looms above him like a hill, within whose shade a village lies at rest, or the first cloud so terrible and still that bears the coming harvest in its breast. In simple terms, what is this poem about? Let us take a look at the subject matter of the Zulu girl. In the poem, we have a description of a Zulu girl or woman who stops her work in the fields to breastfeed her baby in the shade of a tree. Figuratively, the poet suggests that as the baby drinks its mother's milk, he absorbs her calm contentment. However, at the same time, he also learns about his ancestors' tragic and violent history in which the Zulu nation was defeated by the British and then subjected to colonial rule. The mother gives her baby not only her motherly protection, but also the desire to correct the injustices of the past. We can note that traditionally Zulu women were responsible for the ploughing of the soil and this is reflected in the Zulu girl's activity in the poem. In the next few slides we will take a close look at each line of this poem. The first two lines read, when in the sun the hot red acres smolder down where the sweating gang its labour plies. Consider the word acres. All this is referring to is acres of land or areas of land. These areas of land are said to smolder. Generally, we associate the word smolder with hot coals. So here the comparison suggests that the soil of the fields is very hot, like burning or smouldering coals. We can look at this comparison a little bit further and say that it is also suggesting how the red earth looks because of the harsh sun beating down on it. This first line sets the scene of a harsh and unforgiving environment. The gang in line two is described as sweating. Of course, this would suggest that the laborers are sweating firstly because of the heat and secondly due to their physical exertion. 
consider the use of the word gang. By referring to these laborers as a gang, it strips them of their individuality, as if they are not considered or valued as people or individual persons. The word plies simply means to work hard and continuously, which implies the tedious routine of these laborers' work in the fields. Lines three and four read, a girl flings down her hoe and from her shoulder unslings her child tormented by flies. Consider the way in which the girl puts down her hoe. She flings it down. This action could suggest the girl has an attitude of impatience and exasperation. In other words, it could be interpreted as a sense of defiance because she has to reject her work to attend to her child. Remember that a hoe in this context refers to a long-handled gardening tool used to plow soil. Her child is described as being tormented by flies. This word, or the diction here, reinforces the anguish of the child and the unpleasant conditions he and his mother are exposed to in the fields. The atmosphere or the mood in these first four lines or from stanza one is one of discomfort and unease. Lines five and six read, she takes him to a ring of shadow pulled by the thorn tree purpled with the blood of ticks. Consider the phrase, she takes him to a ring of shadow pulled by the thorn tree. What figure of speech do we have in this phrase? Well done to you if you said that we have a metaphor. Here the shade of the thorn tree is compared to a pool of water. The shade, like a pool of water, provides a cool place for the mother to feed her baby. Notice that there is a colon used in line 6. This would indicate that an explanation is to follow. The first explanation is a description of the thorn tree that is purpled with the blood of ticks. The trunk of the thorn tree has been stained by the blood of the ticks because, as we will see in the next two lines, the mother has wiped the blood of the ticks from her fingers onto the trunk of the thorn tree. Lines 7 and 8 read, While her sharp nails in slow caresses ruled, prowl through his hair with sharp electric clicks. Consider the diction or the use of the word caresses. This word suggests the mother's tenderness because she gently caresses her hand through her baby's hair. In line 8, the Zulu girl's hand also prowls through his hair. In terms of imagery, we have a metaphor here. We could say that the mother is compared to a hunter who prowls her son's head in search of prey. This creates the impression that the girl is determined to care for her son, but it also indicates that she has a tough streak, having to endure great hardship in her life. The mother's nails are described as picking the ticks from her baby's head with sharp electric clicks. This could possibly be referring to the idea that the mother is grooming her son, looking for ticks in his hair, and when she finds them, she squeezes them between her fingernails with sharp electric clicks. Lines 9 and 10 refer to the Zulu girl's baby. His sleepy mouth, plugged by the heavy nipple, tugs like a puppy, grunting as he feeds. The baby's mouth is described as sleepy. But despite this, the child drinks greedily from his mother's breast. 
The baby's mouth is described as plugged by the heavy nipple. The Zulu girl's heavy nipple indicates the abundance of nourishment she provides to her son. The baby is described as tugging like a puppy, grunting as he feeds. In terms of imagery, what figure of speech do we have here in line 8? Well done if you said simile. The speaker compares the child to a puppy. This reinforces the baby's innocence and how he is merely acting on instinct. In terms of diction, the words tugs and grunting indicate just how hungry the child actually is. Lines 11 and 12 read, Through his frail nerves her own deep languors ripple, like a broad river sighing through the reeds. The word languors refers to tiredness or weariness or a lack of physical or emotional energy for something. In line 12, like a broad river sighing through the reeds, we have a simile here. The Zulu girl's feeding of her baby takes on a deeper meaning when she is compared to a broad river. We can interpret this idea in two ways, literally and figuratively. Literally, all the mother is doing is breastfeeding her baby and satisfying his need for nourishment. Figuratively, however, it's as if she is passing on through her breastfeeding the stories, history, culture and struggles the Zulu people have had to endure. These feelings run deep and broad which suggests how deeply seated these emotions are. The sighing indicates both how tired she is and her longing for a better life. Lines 13 and 14 state, Yet in that drowsy stream his flesh imbibes an old, unquenched, unsmotherable heat. Consider the word yet. This word marks the turn in the poem that introduces a shift. This shift comprises of a more symbolic interpretation. Instead of just being a description of a mother caring for her son in unpleasant circumstances. The word imbibes means to take in or to absorb something. Here, along with the physical nourishment of the mother's breast milk, Figuratively, the baby also absorbs or takes in the values, history and culture of his mother's Zulu tribe. The baby is described as absorbing an old, unquenched, unsmotherable heat. It is as if the nurturing of the child sparks his mother's pride, an old, unquenched, unsmotherable heat and her desire to pass on the legacy of past Zulu warriors to her son. Lines 15 and 16 read, The curbed ferocity of beaten tribes, the sullen dignity of their defeat. These ideas are what the Zulu girl is figuratively passing on to her baby while she is feeding him. The word curbed simply means when something is restrained or held back. Ferocity refers to savagery or cruelty. This line refers to the Zulu nation that was defeated and their fierceness that was restrained. Dignity refers to the idea that despite having been beaten and having to accept defeat, the Zulu tribe has maintained their dignity or their composure and honour. The tribe's dignity is described as sullen. This suggests that there is an underlying resentment and hostility in their acceptance of their position of defeat. 
What we can gather from these lines is that there is a sense that the mother's nurturing of her son will awaken a fierceness and a spirit of their nation that has been suppressed for so long. Before we move on to the last lines of the poem, let's just recap the idea or the image of the mother on the prowl and the baby who is likened to a puppy. The image of the mother as a predator on the prowl is carried through to the description of her child as a puppy, since a puppy will also grow into a predator. This is synonymous with the idea of the future ferocity of the child once fierce tribal values have been instilled in him. In other words, like a puppy who could grow up to be a vicious dog or a predator, the baby will grow up to be a fierce warrior with Zulu values deeply rooted within him. Lines 17 and 18 read, Her body looms above him like a hill, within whose shade a village lies at rest. In line 17, what figure of speech do we have? Well done if you said we have a simile. In this simile, the mother is compared to a hill that provides shade for a village. The Zulu girl's baby, subsequently through the use of a metaphor, is compared to a village. Let's tie this image together. The mother is grand and imposing over her baby. Like a hill that shades the village in its foothills from the sun, similarly the mother provides her son with protection. The last two lines of the poem state, Or the first cloud so terrible and still that bears the coming harvest in its breast. Consider the word cloud. The mother is compared to a hill, but now she is compared to a cloud that will bring the rain required for growth of the coming harvest. This cloud is described as terrible and still. These words imply that the cloud is menacing and that the storm signaled by the cloud will arrive unexpectedly. The threat of this storm is evident. Take a look at the phrase in the last line that states the coming harvest. Literally, this means that the clouds hold the rain that will allow the upcoming harvest of the foods growing in the fields to take place. Figuratively, and in relation to the future of the Zulu nation, we can say that the image of the coming harvest holds the promise of a better future. A future where the Zulu nation will be liberated from their oppression. It foreshadows how the younger generation, in other words the young mother's baby, will rebel against their oppression and bring about change. A further interpretation of the last four lines of the poem could be as follows. The mother has the power to determine her son's future. She could allow her son to live in peace, like the village sheltered by the hill, or she could unleash a storm that could restore the dignity of her Zulu tribe. The child ultimately becomes a symbol of the strength of the Zulu nation. He represents the future generation that will rise up against their oppression and claim what is rightfully his. Now that we have gone through a line-by-line -line analysis of the poem, let us consider the title, The Zulu Girl, for a moment. The title tells us what the poem is about, a young Zulu woman. But it does not hint at the complex themes within the poem. Also, while the title mentions a girl, she is obviously old enough to have a child and also to do an adult share of the work in the fields. Let's consider the form and the structure of the poem. Looking at the poem as a whole, you can see that the poem is divided into five stanzas. 
Note that each stanza consists of four lines. The rhyme scheme is simple and follows a regular pattern. As you will see from the letters allocated to the words at the end of each line, starting with ABAB in stanza 1 and following the same pattern in stanzas 2, 3, 4 and 5. The meter or the rhythm of the poem is regular, with most lines consisting of 10 or 11 syllables. The commentary that we can make on the themes of this poem is that the poem contrasts the theme of the peaceful life of the Zulu people with their dramatic history of struggle and defeat. It also suggests that their pride and will to resist is still strong and that they will rise up against their oppressors in the future. Let's consider the diction of the poem. Remember that diction refers to the poet's choice of words. Oftentimes diction and tone go hand in hand because diction is what creates the tone of the poem. In the first stanza, the poet uses words to describe the extreme heat, such as hot red, smolder, and sweating gang. In stanza one, he also emphasizes how harsh the conditions are by using words like labor, the girl flings down her hoe, and the fact that the child is tormented by flies. In stanza two, the choice of words or the diction gives a feeling of coolness and relaxation in contrast to stanza one. The mother sits in shadow, which is pulled by the tree. The words slow caresses also give the impression of gentleness. However, the poet also uses words that give a less pleasant feeling. The tree is purpled with the blood of ticks. The mother's nails are sharp and they prowl through the baby's hair like an animal hunting. The word sharp is repeated when the poet describes the sound the mother's nails make when she plucks the ticks from her baby's hair with sharp electric clicks. The third stanza describes the baby feeding and the diction gives the impression of sleepiness and contentment with phrases such as sleepy mouth, heavy nipple, puppy grunting, deep langers and broad river sighing. The diction in stanza 4 gives a strong impression of suffering and violence that is lurking just beneath the surface. This idea is created by words and phrases such as unquenched, unsmotherable heat, curbed ferocity, and sullen dignity. Lastly, in stanza 5, the poet uses words that describe safety and protection. Words like shade and lies at rest. There are also words that warn us of violence and destruction in the future. These words are looms and terrible and still. Thank you for watching this video presentation on The Zulu Girl by Roy Campbell. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content on English home language and English first additional language for grades 8 to 12.